We have moved from thinking about the international diplomacy and international negotiations on climate change as being the thing that needed to happen first in order to drive local action. And now we see that local action is actually setting the pace and that hopefully international negotiations can keep up. We thought that the developed countries would show leadership in the international diplomacy area on climate change and would also show leadership and would go first in driving mitigation. And although Europe is still defending that leadership position, on the whole we have to now acknowledge that developing countries are very much stepping up to the leadership plate as well. We believed that politicians and policymakers would create a global framework within which the, public, the private sector business could get on with creating a low carbon economy. But what we are seeing is that as policymakers and politicians take longer than originally foreseen to create that global agreement, many business leaders are just getting on with the job. And that latter point may not be as clear here in Brussels, where the voices of those who believe that change can wait or should not ever happen, like Business Europe and Eurofair and others, far outweighs the voices of those that are actually getting on with it. Companies like Philips and Siemens and Danfoss, but also smaller companies, companies in the renewable space, companies represented here today. And the reality of what is happening day to day in business is no longer reflected by the words that we hear from those that represent them in the debate here in Brussels. <coughs> so on the whole, and that's the fourth inversion, we are moving from looking at climate change as an environmental problem and discussing that problem in the framework of how do we share the burdens to looking at the low carbon economy opportunity and talking about who will capture that prize. We are increasingly, I think, changing the narrative from how to solve the problem to how to capture the opportunity. If those four changes are indeed the reality that the Commissioner is facing in the negotiations and that is playing out on the global scene, what are then the implications for the European Union? The implication first and foremost is that our future is a low carbon economy future. That that is the only way in which Europe can be successful economically. And that fits so well with the, the, the original theme of this organization, the Lisbon Council, because remember this organization stems from an initiative under previous commissions to drive the competitiveness of the European economy. The competitiveness of the European economy will solely be defined by whether or not we can play in that low carbon economy of the future. That will be the next industrial revolution. And if you don't know it, you can't see it. But companies like the ones I mentioned before, they know it and they're getting on with it. So the question to our political leaders is, do they see it as well? Are they getting on with it? And there will be an interesting come to Jesus moment um, on the 4th of February, when uh, the heads of state gather here in Brussels for the energy summit. Now, there are two ways in which that energy summit can play out. It can be a traditional energy summit. We can talk about energy security and talk about the need for more gas pipelines, North Stream, South Stream, this stream, that stream. We can talk about how we make sure that we stay competitive by keeping our energy costs low. Or we can tie energy and low carbon prosperity together in the framework of what our new economy will look like. And then I believe that the European heads of states have to show leadership. Then they have to show that they really mean this. They first and foremost have to come out of that meeting on the 4th of February, not with a list of pipelines they want to build, but with a new vision for where the European economy will go. How will we compete in that low carbon economy? Then they have to put their money where their mouth is. They have to commit very firmly to ensure that the money will be there, both at the European level and at the member state level. 
that is particularly relevant in a year that we start a discussion about the budget review, that is particularly relevant for the set plan, that is particularly relevant for the electricity grids that are so crucial for the roadmap 2050, the path towards a decarbonized power sector. They can only come out of that meeting on the 4th of February if they firmly announce they'll move to 30%. I don't think they'll do it, but they really should. Because then at least business leaders like Harry and others will know where we're going. They'll have a marker on the horizon what that vision will lead to. And 30% is absolutely the minimum if you know that we've already moved to the high teens as of this moment. And finally, they have to make it very clear that in a low carbon economy, first and foremost, energy efficiency will drive competitiveness. Competitiveness will not be defined by the steel industry and the cement industry worried about carbon leakage. It represents less than 1% of the European economy. It creates far fewer jobs than anything else. As you were already saying, those jobs are to some extent already shifting offshore. The real trade threat is limited. The real opportunity is the offensive side of our debate. That's where we create the new jobs, the offensive side of a low carbon economy. And that's where the 30% and a binding energy efficiency target will really uh, point to whether we lead or not. Leadership. I wonder whether our heads of states will show that they have it. I'll make a personal comment. I have had the privilege of working with the commissioner over the last three years. And I know that she not only knows it, but that she really sees it. I just wish that on the 4th of February, our heads of state show the same leadership and make it very clear to the populations of Europe that over the course of the next year or so, we will get on with launching that low carbon economy and really putting our money where our mouth is. Thank you. Thank you.